That's drunk. I was 11 back in 1993 when Jurassic Park first hit theaters. I'd been to a fair share of movies up to that point, but that movie was the first time where every single seat in the theater was sold out. It was completely packed. The audience oohed and aahed at all the special effects and applauded at the end, and I'd never been a part of something like that before. So because of that experience, I've always had positive memories of Jurassic Park. But as far as all the other stuff went, like action figures, video games, all that stuff, eh, not really into it. I did play the Genesis game a few times at a friend's house. It's your standard action platformer with two playable characters, Dr. Grant, who has a bunch of weapons you can use, and as a Velociraptor. That's what made this game memorable for me. It's a perfectly good game, although the controls are a bit wonky, and there's only five levels here available for the Raptor, where there's seven if you play as Dr. Grant. But still, this game was pretty good, especially for a movie licensed game, and playing as the Raptor is still pretty cool to this day. <laughs> I didn't get around to playing the Super Nintendo game until many years later. I remember getting pretty far into the game before wanting to take a break, and it was then that I realized there is no way to save. There's not even any passwords. Ugh. At least the Genesis version had passwords. So I gotta let you know right off the bat here, if you want to play Jurassic Park on Super Nintendo on the original cartridge, it's gotta be in one sitting, and this is a long game. If you play this one any way you can, then you're able to utilize save states, and the game is a bit easier to stomach. But other than that, it's just one long playthrough that's hours and hours long. The frustrating thing about Jurassic Park is that despite that major flaw, it does have some pretty good qualities. You get five lives and two continues to get through eight areas, with the goal of the game being to just get off the island. You can move in eight directions, making this play a little bit like Zombies Ate My Neighbors, albeit a bit more limited than that game. The A button fires your primary weapon, Y fires your secondary weapon, which can be anything from a shotgun, missile launcher, a tranquilizer gun, a gas grenade launcher, or uh, whatever this is. From a pure action standpoint, the game plays pretty well. The hit detection can get a little weird at times, but all the controls are as they should be, so this aspect of the game can be pretty fun. The problem here is that the map you're contending with is huge, and there's no in-game map at all. So that leaves you with three options. You can either Google it, and there's plenty of maps online you can find, you can go old school and draw one yourself, or you just hope you memorize the right way to get each area, and good luck with that. But no matter what you end up doing, you're going to be wandering around forever, because like like I said, this map is huge, and you're going to be killing the same enemies over and over, so that kind of sucks. Thankfully, the game gives you a break from this monotony by having you go into buildings to find a keycard which restores power or motion sensors or whatever, at which point the game switches to a first-person perspective. I mean, holy crap, how unexpected is this? I mean, yeah, from a graphics standpoint, this is pretty dang limited. It's about on the same level as the Super Nintendo port of Wolfenstein 3D, but still, that was all that game was, whereas in Jurassic Park, this is just a part of a larger game, so from that standpoint, it is really cool to see. Even more interesting is that these sections are compatible with the Super Nintendo mouse. However, from an actual gameplay standpoint, it's uh, not the greatest. You run into dinosaurs here and there, and they just kind of stand there like, Hey, what you doing? And even then, it can be frustrating to aim properly and hit these things. It's one of those things where, yes, it's obviously impressive that the Super Nintendo hardware was able to execute this and make it playable, but no, that doesn't necessarily mean it's worth slogging through today. Outside of saying, hey, how about that? This is probably pretty cool in 1993, before losing interest like two minutes later. I don't mean to be too hard on this game. I mean, it was developed by Ocean Software, who had a hand in a ton of movie licensed games, like the Flintstones, Waterworld, and Robocop 3, as well as TV based games like The Untouched and compared to those games, Jurassic Park looks like a friggin' masterpiece. My favorite thing about this game is probably the music. No, it does not fit the sweeping classical cinematic soundtrack, it's something else entirely, and it really sounds good. And in a game where you do a lot of wandering around and exploring, it really helps to have a good soundtrack to ease the pain. So while I don't want to rip on Jurassic Park too badly, there's one thing I can't abide by, and that's the ending. Well, I guess I should say the quote-unquote ending, because there really isn't an ending here. You just get off the island, the camera zooms out, and you get to the end screen. 
Yes, I know I missed this one for my worst endings list, that's my bad. What's funny to me though is that the website vgmuseum.com, an excellent resource that has screenshots of thousands of endings to thousands of video games, does not have the Super Nintendo Jurassic Park ending there. Seriously, it's got well over 500 games listed for the Super Nintendo and Super Famicom, and it completely skips over Jurassic Park. And I'm willing to bet it's because it's just way too much of a pain in the ass to get such a crappy ending that it's not worth the trouble of posting it. I should point out that the Super Nintendo also got Jurassic Park 2, subtitled The Chaos Continues, and it's also developed by Ocean Software, and that one's a bit more of a run-and-gun Contra clone, believe it or not. It's totally different from its predecessor, and it's a brutally difficult game with kind of a confusing layout at first. And no, the game has nothing to do with the Jurassic Park film sequel, The Lost World, that didn't come out until 1997. But this game is actually pretty good for what it is, and it's two-player co-op. Anyway, yeah, Jurassic Park for the Super Nintendo does have some good qualities. The game certainly looks nice, the music is great, and all the different weapons are fun to use. And the novelty of the first-person sections is pretty amusing, and it's honestly kind of shocking to see at first. But the flaws here are going to keep some people away, like the fact that there's no way to save, there's no in-game map, and the ending totally sucks. But if those things don't bother you, then yeah, this one's worth checking out. I personally prefer the Genesis Jurassic Park to the Super Nintendo Edition, but the latter still has some good qualities. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.